Ahoy, mateys! Ah, avast, on guard! Ah, just, I just wanted to say hi! Ah, ahoy! Ah, oh, not a friendly crew! Now you don't have any food, I have your food! Squash buckle me, bro! Uh, you guys don't need food, you're just skin and bones, you don't have anything to eat! Eat the food. Ah, banana, brings back my health to full. Ah, I see you've learned this technique. I have a secret to tell you, I'm not left-handed. Uh, come on, no, that's stuck. Ah, oh, shoot, he's to point blank range with a blunder boost. Get out of here. I'm gonna just eat this, don't mind me. I'm just gonna nom 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 nom. Don't, I'm just, no, don't mind me. I'm just gonna, you know, maybe I'll just hide in the water here for just a second. Don't mind me. Ah, what are you doing down here? You can't be down here. I mean, I guess you can. Ah, let's just run up over here. Oh, hey, guys. Dance. Spooky, scary skeletons eat bananas every time. Our vessel seems to have collected a cargo of water. Guys, no. Please. No. Hello, everyone. My name is Atratsu, and today we are having a look at Sea of Thieves. This game was developed by Rare. Yes, that Rare, the one that did Banjo-Kazooie back in the day. This was released June 2020, and I don't know if that's the Steam release date or the Xbox release date. It was first on Xbox and then it was released on Steam later on. Also, it's cross-platform, by the way. And the price is $39.99, or your regional equivalent. At this time, I have played 20 hours of the game, and I think this is a good spot to kind of talk about my experiences with the game before I sink a crazy amount of time and forget everything that took place when we when I started playing the game. So let's jump on in. There is a bit of a story that goes on in Sea of Thieves, but I will not really be commenting much about it because in my 20 hours of playing this game, I've only done one of the story-related tasks. Well, the Maiden Voyage and one story-related task. By the way, every time that you load in, you watch this very nice cutscene that kind of gives you the piratey experience. So, for those that don't know, Sea of Thieves is a pirate game. What a surprise, right? And it is by far one of the more enjoyable games that I have played in a long time. It has so much to it and is such a fun, excellent game to play with friends. And one of my brothers bought it for the rest of us. And so we played together, and it was great. And then we discovered, uh, not a souring point, but a detail that we didn't realize about Sea of Thieves. It is always online with other people. So that was not something that we realized that we were signing up for. Especially, it's not something that's very noticeable when you first play either, because you will play for hours and hours and hours and not see anybody. All right, that's enough of this. We'll just skip this. In Sea of Thieves, you have two game modes, at this time anyway. I've done both. The primary game mode, I would say, is Adventure. I did Arena just to see what it was all about. Um, regardless of whichever mode that you choose, if you choose Arena, you've got two different types of ship sizes to choose between. You can do these on your own, and you can also group up, and it will match make you with other people. With the Arena, I jumped into the Sloop Arena, and then I did a, an open crew, and the game drafted random people to go along with me, and I was carried. Well, one time I was carried, one time I did the entire thing by myself. So, yeah. It was a fun experience, but I would say don't start here. Do not start an arena. The first thing that you want to do is your maiden voyage. Now, I'm not going to spend this video on the maiden voyage because that's what basically... Anyone who gets Sea of Thieves goes through first. So what's the point of having a video showing you what you're going to go through first, then just jumping into the actual game and then walking you through the, the stuff at that point. So, next up you have Adventure. So you can play this with friends, or you can play this by yourself, or you can play this with randoms. Personally, I prefer playing it with friends or by myself. You have three different ships available to you in Adventure. You have the Sloop, the Brigantine, or the Galleon. So if you're going to choose one, 
for example, the sloop, you then once again have the choice between open crew, which means that the game is going to be bringing in people, you're going to be paired with others. It's a good feature to have if you don't have any friends to play this game with. However, once again, you can play completely on your own. And when I went off on a fishing quest one particular evening, having closed crew is just a very smart option to have. And closed crew is typically what I do. Once you choose whether you're going to have closed crew or not, you go to this screen. This is where you invite a friend and you invite friends through Xbox. So it took a little it took us a little bit to figure out how to invite friends. Also, this is the number of slots that are available on this ship. So you can only invite one friend to be on this ship with you. It's a two person ship. If we go back and we do a brigantine closed crew, you have two friends that you can invite with. So to play this with my two brothers, the, we had to use the Brigantine. Well, we could have also used the Galleon if we wanted more guns or preferred the Galleon ship. But then we would have one empty open slot. So this is the maximum number of people that can play with you on the same ship. Multiple people can play and you might be on the same servers, but that's... I don't know. I don't know how you would figure that out to get more people. It would be really fun to have a group of four friends against another group of four friends. I think that'd be fun. But you invite friends, you invite them with this. This brings up a pop-up for the Xbox interface. This is I'm reviewing this and covering this game on this on Steam. That should be pretty obvious in case it wasn't. Um, Steam and your Xbox account are linked together, so that is another factor that you should keep in mind that this goes through Xbox. Perk is that any Steam achievements I get, um, I also get for the Xbox, or maybe it should be said the other way around, but that's me as an achievement hunter. So, let's jump into Adventure, Sloop, and Closed Crew. Set sail, adventure mode, sloop, crew closed. Ah, settings. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's just jump into the game so you can see some gameplay. The loading screens do take a little bit of time, so I am going to cut and fast forward here. Alrighty then. We should be back now. Every time you join the game, you watch this animation or it might change from season and holiday to holiday. All right, where did they put us? This is a good spot to start out. As you can see, we have now joined a server. And this is something to keep in mind, something that I've only recently learned. Server to server, things are different. Sometimes you'll end up on a server where there are a bunch of people that are hunting down others, and sometimes you will end up on a server where I, I don't even know if there are people on some servers. I don't think you have any control over which ones that you join. It's just that if you get jumped by a lot of people, all you gotta do is leave, ga leave game and then join game again, and you'll just you should end up in a different area. A more experienced player also recommended checking out. There's a particular spot to check to make sure that there aren't others hunting down players. And no. Where is the cage? The Nicholas Cage. Here it is. Ah, so this server, somebody is representing the Reapers. And the Reapers give you reputation by hunting down other people. So this would not be a particularly safe server to play on. If you got up a lot of, if you got a lot of loot, on your boat, you can pretty well expect that you're going to be jumped by somebody. It's kind of irrelevant for the purpose of this video. If anything, it might make the video more exciting if somebody jumped me. But that's something that you would want to check if you see the little boat here, right here. That means somebody is currently using an emissary flag for this trading company. Which again, Reapers, you can remember who it is because Mr. Bones up here. And if you read it, increase your emissary grade by bringing all loot to the Reaper's hideout, including the flags of sunken emissaries. 
earning you more rewards and increasing your status in their ledger. So, they are almost exclusively a emissary that hunts down others. But again, we really don't need to worry about that. If my ship ends up getting sunk, we will just leave this game and join another one. So, welcome. Welcome to Sea of Thieves. Before we actually sit down and talk about the gameplay mechanics, let's quickly talk a little bit about the story. On your maiden voyage, you start out. Um, that teaches you just the basics of everything that you need to know. And a little bit of a teaser for the type of story that you're in for. You are being taught by a ghost pirate. And once you finish your maiden voyage, you end up here. And you run on over to the mysterious masked man in the tavern. There are many different towns like this. And from one town to another, you can pretty much go to any to sell stuff. This is the fellow, Mysterious Stranger. You look like you have questions. So then you can interact with him. The first quest that you will go on is this, which is the Shroudbringer. This is the one that I succeeded in completing on my own. But boy was it not without ordeal. There was a lot of nonsense and shenanigans that happened to try to complete this quest. So we're going to pick up this quest, and then this is a bit of a sample of what takes place. You get a little bit of a little bit of story in between it. He carefully warns you about it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to listen to him talk, because that's what I'm doing. The reason I wanted to pick that up is because I wanted to show... Well, there's some useful things about the quest item that you get that I had to figure out. And that's one of the differences between using a keyboard and mouse and using a controller. So again, remember that this game was designed for consoles first. So a lot of the controls kind of feel like remnants from when it was a console. Not to say it's bad, just that there's a little bit of a learning curve on getting used to certain things. So there are two parts to playing this game, I would say. You have the ship management and the pirate management. Both are equally important. So let's start with the simplest, which is just the basic controls for your pirate. I move around with Wasid. You can jump, swing a weapon with left click, block with right click. And then if you hold your left click, you do a a thrust that knocks back enemies. You also have a couple different, you also have another weapon. You have the secondary weapon. So I use one on the keyboard to bring up the sword. I use two to bring up the pistol. There are other weapons that are available to you. Those are accessed here. So you've got pistols, you've got blunderbuss, blunderbuss eye, blunderbuss. And you also have snipers. Eye of Reach, I suppose, is what they're calling them. Flintlock, Blunderbuss, Eye of Reach. Now you'll notice I do have a few weapon skins. So the default weapon skins you start out with this cutlass, this pistol, this Blunderbuss. Feels like we're hunting rabbits with this gun. And this sniper which is the only scoped one. And... Bingo. The crosshairs are the broken glass effect. I don't know how much bullet drop is. I haven't experimented that much with it. I haven't used this weapon that much. I actually stuck with the coolest weapon skins that I unlocked on Halloween. I don't know if this is the best weapon loadout. Honestly, I have a suspicion that this flintlock is not a good loadout because I have met most players that have been using the sniper rifle. So I'm thinking that this probably is a little bit better. Now, 
this has a limited number of shots. We're at shot two, three, four, and five. Click, 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 click. No more bowets. At this point, you can no longer use this gun. So what you do is you need to interact with uh, an ammo chest or crate somewhere. It gives you more ammo, and now you can resume shooting. So beware wasting your shots. You don't want to waste your range shots, whether you're against NPCs or human players. So your shots count. Don't miss. <laughs> it dings when you shoot it. I was hoping that it, that's what it would do. So that's kind of the basics for controlling your character. Now, there's a whole skill wheel, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. But uh, before people's eyes glaze over, let's talk about ship control. So the first thing that you'll want to do with a ship is you'll want to raise anchor. This is faster with two people. If you have another person on the ship with you, they can jump on the other crank here and raise the anchor. Next, you need to drop the sail. And lastly, you use the wheel to turn. Something that took me a little bit to get used to. I was used to controlling with, like, Guns of Icarus is the ship type controls. I'm using quotation marks. The ship controls that I was using. So in Guns of Icarus, you turn the wheel all the way to the right. And then you let go and it goes back to center. It doesn't do this in this game, which I thought was a problem. But now I realize it's important and good that they don't do it that way. The reason why it's good is because you can then just point your ship in a direction and turn the wheel and then go and do something else. For example, um, oh no, Captain, we've got we've got water down there. Quick, uh, hard to. Port. Now you have to go down here and you have to pick up the water and toss the water out. Oh no. This is not even close to an actual amount of water to be concerned about. And now we run up here and I see that I've almost crashed us into rocks. Splendid. Now there is a little bit more to the sailing than just this simple matter. You do have some control on how high the sails are set. This is a bigger deal on other ships where the sail is obscuring your vision or you have to trust somebody else to direct for you. Not on this ship. On this ship it's fine. We can have it down. The other detail is you have wind direction. So I think this is a safe direction that we can just do this. By the way, full turn to the right. The wheel does not turn any farther. Now we are turning right as hard as we possibly can. We are in the center now. Full turn to the left. And now we can't turn to the left anymore. Or port side! Full turn to port side! I'm not good at my nautical terms. I always have to be like, alright, port, same number of letters as left, right? Uh, yes. Wait, starboard is right, port is left, port, star, uh, port left. This is why I don't think about it that much and why I don't use the nautical terms. So the other detail is wind direction. So you have two that you have to use. There it is. There it is. That's the sign that it's gra the sails have grabbed the wind. So there are two spots you interact with your sails. Currently it's, it's, it's working, but it's not working as good as it could. This first one is how you raise the sail up and down, and you move it up and down with W and S, uh, wait, yeah, W and S. And then this one, you move it left and right with A and D. And you try to get it right there where the sails do that. Now we are going as fast as we possibly can. Now the different ships do control a little bit differently, and they also have a different layout. So it takes a little bit of time getting used to each ship and where the things are at. Especially if you get used to one ship, for example, knowing where the food is on that ship. There aren't many ships, but it'll take a little bit of time to get used to it. This is where the cannonballs are on the sloop. And these are the cannons. You load with R, and then you fire it 
with the left click. Ooh. Used a boolean. Boolean? Chain, no, chain shot. That's what it's called. Load cannonball. There is a little bit of leading your target on these. You really have to kind of get a feel for how you're doing it. And for that, the arena mode was actually fantastic. Where are we going? Who's that? We're about to go out of bounds. Let's not do that. Let's let's turn back. So one of the things that just took a long time to get used to is just kind of the controls, where everything is on the ship. And I'm just going to kind of do that naturally. So hopefully I don't just over explain it. it. You pick it up naturally. This is enough information that you should be able to pick up the game and go. However, if you're going to enjoy the game, I think that it wouldn't hurt to kind of get a little bit more familiar and watch a little bit more of the gameplay to decide whether or not this is actually a game that you would be interested in playing. The biggest factor is if you're going to play with other friends, I think. Playing it on your own is fun, but you really have to be in the mood to play a pirate game. Now, there's a lot in Sea of Thieves. So much, in fact, that that is why I'm a little bit afraid to put off making a My Thoughts video on this game because the longer I put it off, the more I'm just going to forget about stuff. So, going over the parts of the ship. You have an anchor, you have the wheel, and you have to spring the sails up and down, and then you have the sail angle. So that's the nautical stuff you need to know for where you are where you are trying to sail. Now you'll notice there's a compass on the helm. That's important. Navigation, I think, is the next important thing that you learn. So the player has a compass. That's good. And it points... We are now facing north. This direction that our character is facing is north. North directly above us. So, we are currently passing by the Golden Sand Outpost to our northeast. So, there should be an outpost to the northeast. Let's get up in the crow's nest have a good look at that. And up we are in my favorite place in the ship, to be sure. North, east, there it is. Now, there is also your telescope. Is that what they call it? I don't know if that's what they call it. That's what I call it. Your eyeglass. That is a... I think that's a friendly town, right? Place you start. Whoops. We are headed towards the rocks, Captain. Iceberg head. Uh, iceberg head lettuce. Um, let's go... Okay, southeast, sure. We'll head towards... We'll head towards that. There are some fun things you can interact on your ship. I like turning off the lanterns because I like to think that then no one will see me coming. Foo -foo -foo. Foo -foo 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 -foo. Honestly, it's probably more problematic than helpful. <laughs> Oop. All right. How are we looking? Looks good. By the way, interacting with the map, there are different places on the map. There are multiple people that are using the map. Whoever uses it first is the one that moves around on the map. You move around with your mouse, you zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. You can also move around with good old Wasid. One of my recent discoveries is you can zoom in and click to see the tall tale. And tall tales are the main story plot things. Once the tall tale is finished, you can repeat it, which is obvious that I, I can do that. If you want to propose a quest, you go here. And you have voyages, or... Oh, we already set sail on the on the tall one. I'd have to vote to cancel this tall tale, which it's just me. I could just cancel it by myself. But you work as a crew. So if you wanted to propose a voyage, you drop that, and then you would vo vote for it. Or we can pick it up and be like, nah, I don't want it. But I'm going to just drop that there. Why not? So let's get a little bit more familiar with, with me ship. You have up here harpoon guns. These can be used for retrieving 
crates in... Retrieving crates that are in the water. I think they can also be used to help move the ship around. Again, that's higher level play that I really can't help with because I haven't, I haven't, haven't really used that. Normally, I'm by myself. I don't have time to man a harpoon gun and sail and all the other things. Somebody who's good might, but not me. You've got a bell that you can ding here. And then we've already been up in the crow's nest, but there are a couple things up here to show, other than the glorious view. So, first, you have another bell. I like to think you could communicate in Morse code to your friend down there. You also have a flag box. So I purchased a black flag at one point, or maybe it was this one. I don't remember which one I got. I got a flag at one point, and then I was like, how do I use it? So it's up here that you use that flag. There are also alliances, but I don't know what that's all about yet. There are a lot of things that I will be saying I don't know a lot about. Even though I've spent 20 hours in the game, it's still just nothing. There's so much more to explore. I don't know what this is for. I'd like to put a bird in there. I just want a bird, honestly. And there can be a bird, but I'm not going to pay money for it. This is the armory where you switch your weapons, your map, obviously. This is where you refill your ammo, your ammo crate. Anything we have to be worried about? Nope, we are good for now. Next up, we... Well, there was obviously the ammo barrels up here. Let's refill these. You have different types of shot that you can make. The... Whoop, let's... No, let's... No, there it is. You've got a fire bomb, a blunder, blunder bomb, and then chain shot. You can load these into your cannon. You can also throw them. So let's quickly bring in a little bit more water because I'm about to start a fire. So, ha cha! No, that's not a fire. No, no, no. I want to start a fire. Oh no! Fire! B for bucket! Grab the water! And toss the water on myself, because I am currently on fire. Grab more water, and let's put out the... Oh, it's already put itself out. Well then. Can I put it back in there? No. Bucket that out. Did I make a hole with it? Doesn't look like it. Repairing your ship is another important part of the game as well. You can... Oops, we don't have any wood right now. This is where you get the wood on this vessel. You have to have wood in your inventory. Get out of here. Stupid... There we go. The keyboard shortcut for wood is 5. And if you have this open up, you can press Q and then 3. Q is how you bring that up. If your ship gets damaged at all, can I damage it with something? Ah, now it's an important, <laughs> another important detail that we probably should talk about. Ooh, 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 ooh. It hurts, it hurts so bad. So you'll notice at the bottom left of the screen, there is a pirate skull, or just a skull, I suppose, and it is red, as most of you have probably deduced because it's pretty bloody obvious. Uh, that is my health, and right now my health is low. I might die. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, no, maybe eating bananas. All right, bucket, grab bucket, throw bucket on self. We have now put out our fire, and let's put out that fire. Any more food? I will grab more bananas. And then the keyboard shortcut for bananas, or really any kind of food that you can eat, is three. Omnomina, bring the health back up to max. You will take damage from a lot of different things, and it's important that you bring back your health, so... As a rule, I try to keep food and boards and 
as you can see, I can throw these, so it's handy to keep those on you as well when fighting against skeletons. So, I've already shown you where the snack box is. The snack box is over here. We've got two barrels, and your ship always starts out with supplies. So you don't need to worry about using up supplies. The next time you join the game, you will have new supplies replenished. That being said, if you're gonna play for multiple hours, you will want to save up food from extra crates and stuff that you visit. As you can see up here, that's the limit on how many of any type of item you can carry in your inventory at a time. Let's go ashore. Why not? So, this is where the boards are. You've got your vanity items in here, of course, and you just start out with some of them. You do have some ta tattoos, makeup. You have emotes. I unlocked two emotes for free because they were having a... It was just free on the store. Always worthwhile checking the store if they have something free there. Your equipment chest, these are also alternative skins that I've picked up for all these different items. I want that one. That one looks cool. <laughs> and then this, if I had a pet, it would be in here, or outfits. Most of the vanity items are purchased, well, the pets anyway, are purchased through in-game currency. Do I have access to that right now? No. If we run across one of those vendors, I'll show you, but um, there's an in-game premium currency, but it's all for vanity items, which is the method that I would prefer they implement for this kind of thing. Don't worry about any other barrels as a Minecraft type player. I was all excited being like, how am I supposed to know where everything is? The only barrels you need to worry about are the red ones, the hammer ones, which is the boards, and the food ones. Then this one over here, clothing. I use this, 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 and this so little I forget that they're on the ship. There is customizations available for your ship as well. We will go back to town actually here in a second. Let's unload the cannons and show my favorite part of this game. You can load yourself into the cannon, and then shoot yourself out of a cannon. I might have overshot that a little bit. Oh, and now we're on a jungle island. You never know what you're gonna find here. Pick up a snake basket, and gah! get the snake in the basket. No, 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 let go, let go. I'm gonna just drop that with, yeah, you stay over there. You think about what you did. Ho, ho, ho. And, all right. So, let's eat, because apparently poison is fixed by just waiting it out and then eating fruit. I might make fun of it, but I don't know how else you would do that unless you implemented, like, a med kit system. And you'll find these items around the area. It's always worthwhile reading and interacting with any lore objects. Because you'll get quests, and you will also get commendations I think they're called just in-game achievements there's multiple there's two different currencies there it is top right here this one is harder to get than this one this currency you get from just selling stuff this one you tend to get from events and from interacting with lore objects there's another currency that I don't have that is the one that you would pay actual money to get and that's to get the aesthetics and stuff like that so currently it's not just, you know, just silly that I put a snake in a basket. I could bring this snake in a basket to a merchant at some point and... Oh. And then sell this now as a... You jerk! Now he's dead, and so it's no longer valuable. Ugh. <laughs> the funniest scream when I was playing this with my brothers. <laughs> My youngest brother, he picked up this basket. He got a snake, and as you saw, when you have the snake, it is up in your face. We thought that we thought that he was safe when he did that. Wasn't that cute? We thought that he was safe with the snake in the basket, and the snake looks into his face, 
and spit poison. And I will never forget the scream that he made. It was, oh, <laughs> it was a you had to be there moment. Trust me, it was very funny. <laughs> Now, as a general rule, you're going to get these types of items in barrels. So these aren't the kind of loot items that you want to try to get. The kind of loot items you want to get are... Get out of here. Get out of here. You want to... Let's, let's just... I don't need to basket him. I just want to basket him, all right? Whoa, excuse me. All right, let's basket him and then toss him with X. Basket, 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 and toss with X. Get out of here. All right, let's just go around. Press three for food, eat the food. There was somebody with a name here. Whoops, let's ignore that. You'll find these different like relics and monuments around. What's this? This basket belonged to the Totten Snake, a pirate who continues to help many others when he isn't too busy talking about snakes. Often, he just does both at the same time. What a guy. Oh, there it is. Combination unlocked. Snake Charmer. And plus five of the currency. Speak of the devil. What an excellent illustration. All right, that is our boat. Something's hissing at me. Don't like it. All right, do we have anything else here? No. All right, let's go over here to... Ow! Brink my ankles. Let's go over here to this island. And you have to get different, uh, like, containers to get different animals, by the way. And that's not even necessarily what you want to sell. If you find something in the sand, I don't know if I can dig any of that out, can I? Nah. You use a shovel to dig stuff up. They teach you that in the Maiden Voyage. Alright. Where are you? Ah, wah! You're not going to get the the highest level highest level play suggestions here. Block and attack. Ow. Oh, you think you can eat fruit? No. Smack. Smack. Hey. I picked up notes which gave a quest. Ah, to be or not to be, whether tis noble to take up arms against a sea of trouble and pray, end them, to die, to sleep no more. The only quote that I have from Shakespeare. I guess there is Othello, I knew him well. Cinder Armor Man, I knew him well. So we now have an item that we can sell and is worthwhile bringing back. Typically what you would want to do is you'd want to do a quest to bring back items, although we'll see if we're anywhere near. If we're anywhere near... Actually, I could just cut. If we're anywhere near a town, I might just bring this back to demonstrate where to sell. You sell different things to different people. Alright, where's the nearest one? No, that's not a friendly town. Plunderer's Outpost. Hey, that looks close by. You circle stuff by left-clicking. So that's just south of us. Let's do this maneuver. So this is a break turn. You drop the anchor. It swings the ship around. And then we lift the anchor back up. And I probably am about to crash into the shore. Can I turn? All right. Actually, I want to I want to crash into the shore very briefly so that everyone can see how to repair the ship. Ta-da! We have now gotten a hole in our ship. There are different types of spots that your ship can be damaged, so it's worth knowing that there are different things that you need to repair. To repair something, you have to bring out the plank of wood that you're using. The wheel can be broken, and so you will need to interact with the wheel to in certain spots to replace the spokes. Wait, we want to go south, we want to go south, we want to go south. Come on. Southeast, and... 
So. There are also audio cues that can help you out. So I'm hearing running water. So you run up to the hole and then you hold down the left mouse button to fill the hole. As a general rule, you should stop the leaking first, but to prevent your ship from sinking, you really need to get out the bucket. So learning the keyboard shortcut B is a very good friend of yours. So that is an area there and there. You can get holes here, here, here. I think I've seen a hole here and here. I've seen holes back here on each one of these sections. And yeah, if your ship fills up with water, your ship will sink. So, bucket that water. Your ship can also fill with water in storms too, as I found out earlier this afternoon. That was a lot of work. Sailing in storms is hard. All right, so we have to go west a bit. So let's turn west a tiny bit. I bet it's that big rock right there. South west. Beautiful. Now let's move this and maybe we can grab the wind a bit better. Or not. Maybe the wind just is against us this entire time. That's the best we're going to get. Well, while we are waiting to get back here to sell, I suppose let's talk about a little bit more that you can have as your player. So you have all these different items on your mouse wheel here. Up here you have food, and you have different types of food, but this just grabs any food. Up here you have cannonball, you have a plank of wood. This is your spyglass, very valuable to use. That is another player. <laughs> And this is your shovel you use to dig in the sand, dig up treasure. There's some quests that require you to dig up buried treasure at certain locations. There are certain puzzles that require you to do it. This is an important tool. Get used to it. Here you have a lantern. And you can... Ah, we just have a normal fire. You can get special fires for certain events. So you right-click to extend it and then you use another click to take the flame and then you can store those flames there too. There are different colored flames depending on what happens. That's details that's not really important. And then bucket at seven. It's at seven because you have a shorter keyboard shortcut. It It's not that. It is essential but learn the B for bucket. Easy to remember. Right? Right. This is just the first page. These are kind of the important go-to ones that you're going to use the most, and I would agree with the mapping there. Also, they do have keyboard uh, rebinding that you can do on the keyboard, so that's good. Come on. I didn't realize that we were taking the slow way. Now, what's going to be curious is if they're going to come at us... Or if I should go at them. I don't intend to attack. I'm too uninterested in bothering other people to want to do that anymore. But this is a game that... It's a pirate game. If you get jumped, remember, you are playing a pirate game. So it's kind of part of the experience. Different items sell to different people. And you'll just get used to who you sell stuff to. The skulls go to the lady in the tent. So if we tried to sell a skull to this person, nah, you can just talk to her. That's all there is to it. Also, it should be noted, you can't shoot your weapon with this. So if we were to fight somebody, we would have to drop it. Also, this is not a safe area. Someone could jump out of the window and shoot us right now if they wanted to. And then you've got the gold hoarders here. This is another faction. You can't sell to this person because it's a. it might be a gold skull, but you cannot sell to them. Then these are vendors to buy cosmetics. This. She is the one that buys it. F to sell the villainous bounty skull. And how much money do you give us? You don't need to stand near them to wait, by the way. You can just kind of walk away. Aren't you giving me something? 
Did I not get anything? There it is. 3,705. Dang, that is... That was worth it. I'm glad we turned that in. Different items sell for different amounts, and it sometimes seems like there's a dice roll. I don't, again, I don't understand it completely yet. There's a lot that goes into it. Your best bet is to just load up on a bunch of loot and then come back every couple of hours and sell. You, you'll get more loot if you spend less time selling and coming back, but that's a risk-reward thing. You risk more, but you might have greater reward if you run back. Let's customize the ship a bit. I only have one customization. It is the sails. I was saving up for some hull customizations, but there are other achievements, so that's how you change the sail. It's facing away with us. Trust me, the emblem's there. And my brothers got different customizations, and they used their customizations on the ship, so as a team, you can customize together. Also, this sail isn't just for the sloop. This is for any ship that I am on. I can raise the black sails. Now, if you want something more, you come here and you buy... Like, hull is what I'd be looking at at this point. So, these are the available hulls. Some of them are locked until you get a higher reputation or you do certain commendations, uh, aka achievements. But, you have a lot of different colors, and I wanted something that looked, that looked green, and I was having a tough time choosing if I wanted something that was green or if I wanted something that was black and would give me stealth. So, uh, yeah. Advice... If you don't want to get jumped, you shouldn't have customizations on, apparently. Can't really comment on that, but there are a lot of customizations. Oh, and there's... Oh, that's cool. Can customize the smoke. There's so much in this game. Next, let's have a look at the vendor who sells you pets and stuff. It's this person. I can get you anything. Eduardo. Hello. So this is the currency up here in the top right corner of the screen. You, This was the free item I picked up. So again, it's worthwhile checking in. Maybe they'll have something there. You can buy pets. This is... Oh, all right. Minor gripe. All right. Macaw. Yes. Cockadoo. Yes. Parakeet. Excuse me. This is clearly an African gray parrot. Come on. Come on. Now, the other ones, yeah, they might be a little bit closer to parakeet, actual parakeet status. But the point is, this is a this is an African gray. This is my bird, Toby. I know the species. Come on. Come on. By the way, I'm just glad that they have an African gray. <laughs> no real big deal there. Ugh. I need to look away from temptation. I don't, I, I don't think there's anything else I really need to show. Oh, this is where this is where you can support the developer even more by buying their stuff. I leave that up to the oh, here's another item. This was the emote that I got. I'll leave that up to the discretion of the viewer to decide whether or not they're gonna do that. So that should give a bit of an idea. Is that person still out over there? Still over there. That's not the ship. I don't see anybody. Okay. Let's get onto the ship and set sail someplace else. So. We just went over the first half of the... The first half of the item wheel. Let's go over the second half. So, the next one is you press F to bring up more. And again, this kind of makes more sense with a controller, I would imagine. But this is... You get used to it with a, with a keyboard and mouse. This item. This item is how you yell to other people in an area. If you want to project your voice. Now that does bring up an important detail that you should know about this game. It starts out automatically with open mic. And I had to turn that off to press to talk. Pronto. 
I do not like... I do not like my voice being projected automatically in a game. Not, not a fan. It makes sense in this context because, you know, you should just talk. You shouldn't need to... You have a lot of other keys to worry about. But I'm just not a fan. So I turned that off, which I was grateful that it was. But you start out the game with it on. That being said, I don't think I would have noticed that it was open mic had I not first played it with my brothers. So again, probably a good thing for people to know starting out. So that would be in settings and the push to talk is the left alt. A little bit of a different location, but that can be rebound. And where is the button? There it is, proximity chat. No, there it is, push to talk, hold. Toggle, hold, or off. It started off as off, switched it to hold. Whoops, we are about to crash. So that would be an important thing to know going into this game. In case you say embarrassing things, I suppose, while your microphone is not on your head, that might not be something that affects many people, but it did affect me. Next up, you have instruments. It plays different songs as you go through. This is an ingenious mechanic in Sea of Thieves. I just wish they had more songs to choose from. This is such a good way to pass the time, especially with friends, because one friend will take the melody and then the others will harmonize with that friend which is just again fantastic level of detail in this game and it's so 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 adorable you have several different types of instruments that you can work with and whoops and let's do ah you can press r for shanties to select which one exactly that you want each each instrument has a little bit of a different sound to it <laughs> there's no melody with the drum so your character whistles just absolutely charming but each one of your friends can pair up with a different instrument and play together. Now, a very important one here, grog. Right click to lift it up for cheers, left click to drain it down. And you can drain it down in sips, or you can drain the whole thing. Uh-oh, we're all out of grog, so we're just gonna come on down here and Refill the grog and you're just gonna drink another one. No, 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 no. I just was just gonna just I just want another drink. I'm just gonna just keep on drinking. We're just gonna do, do, oh, we're just. By the way, I'm not the one staggering around. You're the one staggering around. I'm trying to go straight, straight up and fly right. No, 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 no. I would like to drop anchor now, please. Dro drop anchor. Beautiful. I, I, I've taken my hands off of the keyboard. This is what happens when your character is drunk. If you want to, ooh, gross. You, you vomit when you're drunk. And ooh, if you ever want to sober up, there are two things you can do. One. You could grab a bucket of water and toss it on yourself with your right click. Or... Ugh. That's funny, I thought that sobered me up. We we'll splash it on ourselves. I guess I drank a little bit too much. Oh, look at that. Now we've got a bucket of vomit. Let's just... I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go in here. We're just gonna, we're just, we're gonna sober up pretty soon here. 
How much longer can I stay drunk when I'm underwater? Drunk as a skunk! But seriously, eventually it wait eventually the, the drunk effect wears off. Jumping in the water is supposed to help with that. Almost there. Character's almost done drunk. Oh, I got the little birdies. Alright, next. Alright, we've done all those. Lastly, we have a clock. If you ever want to examine anything like your clock or your compass, you can show them with the right click. You can show a friend and be like, hey. Hey, Derek. Look at this. Do you know what time it is, Derek? Time to get smacked. <laughs> Gave him a new scar. Or if you're doing like the compass and you're like, oh, look at that. This Derek is north of us. Derek, do you see that? Do you, do you see that, Derek? No, I can't believe it, Derek. Look at that. Why are you looking at me like that, Derek? Look, Derek, I don't appreciate that. That's pretty gross if you think about it. I just threw a bucket of vomit in his face. <laughs> this game is great. All right. So, we have now looked at all of these. There's one more tab to look at, and that's by pressing the space bar. That is how you look at quest items. So, you have different quest items here. This is, Snake Island is the golden key between the sky and the deep blue sea. If hidden plunder be your aim, at the great snake god overlooking the beach, lift lantern flame. So... We'd have to look up Snake Island, and for that we'd go back to the ship and we'd look up Snake Island. And then that's to light the beacon at the top of... At the top of... Snake Island. We're not going to do that, we're probably really far away from it. But that's one type of quest that you can pick up, that's one that we picked up. I think we picked it up off of the guy that we killed. That was the special quest. This is a bounty quest. We need to find Wanderer's Refuge and kill these pirates on Wanderer's Refuge. And that's just a, another quest that we just picked up in the area. This is the main quest. The first one that you have to do. And this is why I wanted to pick it up. You lift, you show, uh, same thing, right click to show. Hey, look at this. You see this? Yay! Look at this. He's like, hey, what's up? To flip between the pages of a book is your E and your Q. I had to look that up. It's It makes sense when you think about it, but you can't, that you can't use W. Like, your movement always stays active. I can go, I'm just going to read this book, and then I'm just going to, ah, I'm going to just keep on reading this book while I'm underwater. You're not the boss of me. I don't have to listen to you. Oh, what a good page. Let's just turn on here. I'm going to turn this page here. All right, well, no, 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 let's just, let's just read, let's read. No, let's just, let's just read, read this one. We're just going to, just going to keep on, keep on reading. Good. That's a good, that's a good book to read. Yeah, what a, what a good book, what a good book. Well, I guess when in Rome. Now I'm going to demonstrate dying. I just remembered I haven't yet demonstrated fishing. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Fishing. Well, we'll talk about fishing in a bit. Later. Fishing would be like a recreational type thing you can do. Wow. I have found the bottom of the world. I want to demonstrate what happens when you die. I think it's an important part to understand what you're losing out on, if anything. You don't lose any currency, you, you lose access to your ship for a short amount of time. And in that amount of time, somebody else can pillage and destroy your ship. So, now we die. I can press R to speed this up, press and hold R to release to the ferryman. And... Welcome to the Fairy of the Damned, dear children. Welcome. This is where the dead come 
At last. I don't know who's speaking. How do we emote? Hello! What a pleasant chat. So, the way you emote is by holding down Z, and then you go to any one of these. So, that was another player that we ran into. Apparently, he didn't want to speak to us. That's fine. And you respawn on your ship. So during a fight, this would be super critical. You would lose whatever you had, your ship would be blown up. If your ship is blown up, it respawns somewhere else. So you're not losing anything, like, I haven't lost any currency, I haven't lost any reputation. The only thing you lose is your immediate rewards, and you suffer the embarrassment from... You suffer the embarrassment of another crew having destroyed you. So, let's talk about a recreational activity. How to fish. Alright. It is appropriate that we are on this area. What's in here? Let's get... I had to ask somebody how to use bait, and I'm hoping that one of these will have bait in it. There it is! We had one bait. Wait, do we have more bait? I'd like to demonstrate something else, too. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Eventually these chests will replenish, but it's a certain amount of time. All right, I was gonna demonstrate that you can accidentally eat bait, which is funny, but it also makes you vomit, and we're not gonna waste our bait on that. So first, the basics of fishing. This is just a recreational thing that you can do to kind of pass the time. It's fun though. Oh, and let's make sure we have some open inventory space. I threw away my fish the other night. So, you bring out your fishing rod, left click to cast, and then we wait. You use your left click to reel in, and you're gonna have a bit of a fighting, you're gonna have to fight the fish to be able to reel it in. So what's important is kind of to know which way to bend the fish bend the rod away from the, way, the direction that the fish is going to be pulling, and then you're going to try to reel in. If you reel in or strain the line too much, the line will break and the fish will get away. So, let's see here. I'll try to show how to successfully capture a fish first. So I'm trying. I'm not going to try to break it. There's the fish as it's dancing around, and it grabs it. And you don't need to do anything like an Animal Crossing where you pull on the line really quickly. This is the fighting stage. You just try to pull the direction away. I'm using my Wasid keys to pull away. So I'm currently pulling back towards me. And to the left. All right, now I hold my left click. I reel it in. We should have two more fighting phases. One if we're lucky but probably two. All right, he's going away, so I'm pulling it back. All right, Ooh, ah, I right-clicked. I'm stupid, ow, oh, dumb. Don't right-click, children, otherwise you will lose that immediately. So now we have to go back here, and we have to wait for the fish to pop out again. You always watch them when they, when they pop up. That was actually a really common fish, so it's not that big of a loss, really. Oh, here comes the music. I hear that banjo music. That means the fish is coming up soon. And there he is. And it'll jump out of the water once to taunt us. 
Here it comes. And bloop. There's the bloop. And now it'll come towards the... Whoa! All right, there. All right. Don't want to strain it. So, if you listen to the fishing rod, that noise is straining the line. This, like, like the click click, that's good. Oh, here it comes again. The click click is fine. The straining noise is fine. It's when you hear It'll make the noise if you are pulling the wrong direction or if you are trying to reel in. And once it gets to a critical point, the line will snap and the fish will get away. We should get him now. Ta-da! We've got a golden splash tail. Sunny splash tail. I never noticed that it spins when you move. That's interesting. If your inventory was full of food, you would not be able to pick it up. So, press and hold F to pick it up. We now have a fish. Let's demonstrate one more thing to bait. You have, you have to have your fishing rod out first. So if we have something else here, if you get your fishing rod out, you then press Q again and then you press R to show the bait that you have. Right now we have worms. This will catch a different type of fish. And if we decide to take that away, you can always unhook the bait. Different bait catches different fish, different locations catches different fish. There's a whole, like, mini-game aspect to fishing. There's also some purpose to it, too. We're at an appropriate place to be catching fish because you can sell fish. But only to certain vendors. And we are currently at one of the vendors. Here comes the spl Oh, he just goes straight for it. He didn't even do the sassy splash. All right, we already have this fish. So, demonstrating by holding... That is how you don't catch a fish. Let's catch one more fish properly. And we'll bait it. We might get something different. I never had the nerve to fish in real life. I might have it now, but as a kid, ooh, that's a big one. That's a big one. All right. This one will be a fight. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Stop your fighting. Goodness gracious, stop. Let me reel you in. Come on, let the line go loose. There we go. Real, 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 real faster, man. Real faster. Oh, he's recovering. Nope. And we're just gonna pull away. Yo, go, yo. Again, I think there might be better ways to fish, and I might not understand even the fishing mechanics of the game really well, because I pull in towards myself when I think that sometimes it's best just to stop and inhibit the progress that the fish is doing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, yes! Look at this boy! Trophy Ruby Splash Tail. Yeah, look at him, look at him! This is the vendor that you can sell stuff to. Now we're gonna hold that thought. We are first gonna do one more thing before we sell him. Look at this, I feel like I'm just bringing my offering of just, hello, today I've brought you a fish. There's one more thing that you can do that will get you a little bit more money. You can cook your fish. So first, let's do one that I'm not too afraid of messing it up with. All right, you just toss the fish in there. We eat a banana intently as we watch it. Is there water down here? There's water down here. Get out of here. After a few seconds, the... Good. 
After a few seconds, the fish will change color. And then you will want to wait a few more seconds for it to turn kind of a golden color, which is a little bit deceptive when your fish is yellow to start with. There we go, it's changing. You want to wait a little bit longer. I think... I think that mm, might be a little bit... Might be a little bit burnt. Does it tell us? It doesn't. This one, since it's a trophy, it's going to take much longer to cook. And you can burn stuff. There are, on the map, since we have time, there are three key areas, and the ocean looks different in each area. We're currently in the Ancient Isles area, which is this first third. And the wilds, which is this area over here. Oop, there are four areas. Shores of Plenty, and then Devil's Roar. So the Devil's Roar area... Oh, we still have time. The Devil's Roar area is volcanic. The ocean seems more like gray and dirty. Whereas where we are now in the Ancient Isles, this is where the ocean looks... Almost the most tropical. Oh, here we go. So, first phase. And... Come on. I don't want to burn it, though. Are oh, you cooked? I think I might have... Might have been a little bit close to burning that one, too. Alright, so Ancient Isles. The Shores of Plenty is... I think that's the Reaper guy. The Shores of Plenty is very tropical area as well. The Ancient Isles tropical area. The wilds, this area, it's like it almost it seems like it always has like tropical storms and stuff like that going on there. The water is a little bit darker. As you travel east, the ocean seems to get rougher and the area gets rougher, and you have like volcanic islands. As you can see over here. This is a a safe area here. This is the volcanic islands there, by the way. That's the, the tail. The Shroud Bringer is accessible at any of these, so you just learn to look for the Shroud Bringer icon and you know that's a safe area. We don't have. I don't think. He's not coming towards us, is he? Oh, it doesn't look like it's moving. Alright. Let's. That's the boring way. Let's go the exciting way. Alright, and whoops. Uh, inventory is full. I have loaded all of those in there. Let's unload this. Oop, unload and jump on in and ka -chow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Glitched out there. Maybe you shouldn't shoot yourself out of a cannon directly into a rock wall. Maybe not the best idea. So, first off, here you go. So, that's the ruby splash tail, the trophy one. How much money do we get? Oh, there's the reputation. And a meager 855. Now let's deliver the splash tail. 650. 675. Nah. And you get a little bit of reputation with these guys. So, not as much money as getting that skull. So, this is the mo not the most profitable thing for you to do. However, there is zero risk of you getting. Well, I mean, you might get jumped by pirates here, but, like, what? You can just do this and fish all by yourself off the docks. There are more rare fish. You. Let's just, let's just get one more fish to demonstrate that cooking it's the good idea. Again, I might have overcooked it. You might be better off just selling fish directly. Ah, good. Basic. There's that sassy flip. Got him. All right, let's just sell him directly. Here you go. Directly off the dock. 
and 225. So there you go, that's your demonstration. You get more money by cooking stuff. Not much, but it's something that you can do and there are achievements related to it. So it's a fun activity that you can do if you, I don't know who would buy Sea of Thieves just to fish. You could probably buy a fishing simulator game or many other games to go with, but it's a fun diversion and there's a lot of variety and a lot of hunting that you can do for that. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything else that I really should be talking about in Sea of Thieves. Again, I've only played 20 hours of it. I haven't played that much. I'm still learning. There's reputation still to be had. There's achievements to be had. I think I only have maybe 20% of the achievements in the game. I was being generous. I only have 17% of the achievements in the game. So, by my account, I'm still just getting started, but this should be enough information for people to decide whether or not they're interested in picking up Sea of Thieves. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. I have been just loving my time playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah, this is probably one of the better pirate games that I have played. So, thank you very much for watching. My name is Atratsu, and I will see you on the Seven Seas. Arr. And now, bonus excerpts from Atratsu's adventures once he was finished recording his thoughts. Oh god. I guess we didn't cut. We're not done yet. This... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was gonna go all... I was gonna go north and go see what that other guy was doing, but apparently I forgot that there are sea monsters in this game. Please no. Please, please. You don't, you don't even know. Where is he? Where is he? You stay away. Frankly, absolutely terrifying. I succeeded in getting some loot. There was no good loot though. Do thing. That's a rock. Stealth. No, no, stay, stay in cotton, stay scared of the bugs. I get better. On a boat with Frenchmen, they suspect nothing. The question is, do they know that they have a stowaway? This is honestly all I wanted out of a pirate game. Stowaway on someone else's ship. Oh, please don't notice me. All I just gotta do is look over the edge at the right time. Alright. Time to be daring. And they're gonna wonder where the mysterious music came from. What a party pooper.